Okay, so today's topic is partner determination. We have already seen the video on text determination, right? Partner determination is going to be very similar in terms of configuration. <clears throat> So we are going to see the specifics related to heart determination and then we'll do a piece of configuration for heart determination and you will see that it's very similar to text determination. I hope you have all gone through the text determination video. So consider that like a prerequisite for heart determination. Both of them are unrelated, but since the configuration is the same, that's the reason why I've asked you to go, to go through text determination first. Anyway. So what is a partner function? We all know what partner functions are, because we have talked about it in very much great detail. When we gone through this, when we have gone through the sales order detail, we have seen scenarios like the iPod case where sold to is different, ship to is different, pay it is different, so on and so forth. But what we have not seen is how to define a new partner function. What are some um, um, partner functions that you could create, like business scenario where you could create a new partner function? And what's the configuration associated with it? Okay, so the agenda for today's class is going to be something like this. The business scenario to create new partner functions. Why would you require one? Second, create new partner functions. Okay. And three, configure partner determination. Four, we are going to see it in action. Okay. So the business scenario, what kind of business scenario will demand that you create a new partner function? Almost in every installation of SAP or in every implementation of SAP, there's going to be a new partner function creation. Because every business demands a different set of partners to be associated with their customers or with their, their, their transactions. So in the same sort of deep dive, we have seen the Ingram Micro example. Remember that? So there is Ingram Micro, and there is HP, and there is this reseller, and there is this customer. So from an Ingram Micro's perspective, there were so many different partner functions. Like, so to should two build to pair, which are the common standard system defined partner functions. And then we have additional partner functions like sales rep, value added reseller, value added distributor, or person taking the order, you know, or end user. Right? So the, the combinations were limitless. Let me just remind you about that example. So here is Ingram Micro, 
or rather let me start with HP because that's the company that sells the product. Ingram Micro is a major distributor and this guy is a reseller and this guy is the end user. Right? I hope you remember that scenario. If not, just go to that video once again. The sales order deep dive discusses this scenario in very great detail. So from Ingram Micro's perspective or HP's perspective, partner functions in a sales order are something like this. So there is a sold to, ship to, build to, pay here, VAD, value added distributor, VAR, value added reseller, end user, Installation site, and you can go on and on and on. Depending on HP's reporting and operational requirements, you can have as many partner functions as you want. So the first four are very simple. These are all system defined. So in this case, this is going to be Ingram because Ingram is a sole to. Shift to could be the end user, whoever it is. Build to could be Ingram, payer could be Ingram or the reseller, depends on the scenario. The distributor is Ingram, the reseller is the reseller. Assuming it's like ABC computers or XYZ computers, right? End user is the end user, let's say uh, XYZ corporation. So the end user is XYZ Corp. The installation site could be, say, some address in Atlanta. So on and so forth. So what we will do is create, let's say, a new partner function called VAD. You can pick any, anything you like. Anything that is non-standard, create it and see it in action. That's the goal of this class. So we're going to pick one partner function, var. You could pick var, you could pick end user, you could put installation site, anything you want. So we're going to pick this and create a new partner function called var. New partner function. One that we're going to create is var value added distributor. So where do we start? The transaction to configure partner determination or partners is B O P A N. Okay, this is where you define the partner determination procedure. I'm going to talk about that procedure in a bit. But that's where things last. B O P A N. Right? If you want to go via configuration, the regular SPRO has, go to SPRO, ILG, sales and distribution, basic functions, and then partner determination. So this is where your regular <coughs> SPRO path is. And you want a shortcut, you have the transaction code B O P A. So you can choose either, either one of them. Uh, I would rather choose B O P A N because it's simple and easy to understand, easy to remember. So text determination, remember, is what's the transaction for text determination? No? 
So this is V O P A F. V O T X N V O P A F. Easy to remember. P A partner T X X. So V O P A N V O T X N. Okay, now partner functions are available in these different objects. Customer master, sales order header, sales order item, delivery, billing, so on and so forth. For us, the most important ones are these ones, the ones that are highlighted with the arrows. Customer, sales header, sales item, delivery, billing header, billing item. If you can do customer master and sales document header, the rest of them will be very, very, very similar. Even if you can just do customer master, that's more than it. Okay, so where are the partner functions in the customer master? Sales view, partner functions. Right? So let's go there and then see what are the controls that it has. So first, go to the customer master and then click on change. Okay, I went to the partner function, partner functions, partner determination for customer master, and then clicked on change. So what's our first goal? First goal is to create a new partner function. First step, step one. Create new partner function. We want to call create something like bad V A D, right? So how do we do that? So go to partner functions, okay, it's right here. And then click on new entries. Go to new entries and then say it's a two character ID, so it has to start with a Z or Y as usual. So call it Z D and see if we have a Z D. Okay. And then what type of customer is it? It's a customer. It's not vendor, it's not something else. It's a customer. So if you are type if you are creating of type customer, make sure you select KU here. These are hard coded values. It could be customer, it could be user. It could be logical system. Let's not worry about all of them. At this point, let's just say customer. Okay, and then hit enter. Oops, sorry. KU. Okay. So ZD doesn't exist yet, so we are able to create a new partner function ZD. Right. Okay. Then. Is it going to be unique? So what does this field mean? Unique. Okay. So we have created a new partner function. ZD. Description. And make sure that you select KU if you are doing a customer. Let's talk about users in a little bit. Okay? And then we have unique. What does this mean? Unique means only one occurrence per partner function. Example, sold. In a transaction, there is only one sort. There is only one pair. Pair is also an example. Generally, there is only one pair. One pair, one sort. But shift use could be different. 
There could be many shifters. One line could shift to one, one line could shift to another, so on. Generally, for the most part, you don't need to click unique. You, know, you don't need to impose that specific constraint. You can let that remain open to the business. Okay, but if you want to impose a constraint, yes, you can check mark this. Okay? So this is how you create a new part of the function. Okay, is that clear? We have created a new partner function. So go ahead, click on save. Okay, partner function is done. Now, go to partner function, ZD. ZD doesn't have um, anything in Function conversion. This is not required. No way. The next one is partner determination procedure. So just like the way you have a text determination procedure and the corresponding text types in it, we'll have to create a new partner determination procedure. So how do you create a new partner determination procedure? So go to new partner determination procedures, select the standard partner determination procedure AG. And then, as usual, click on copy. Right? So, step number two new partner determination procedure. Okay, so where do we start? We start here. So go to partner determination procedures. Pick your standard sole to party associated partner determination procedure, AG, and then click copy. Because it's easier. It has so many different partner functions associated with it already. Instead of creating a new one, it's easy to copy and then create your own. So select it, copy, custom partner determination procedure. And as usual, select copy on. Okay, let's select it and then Enter your own partner determination procedure, VD, and then click copy all. Okay. Once you have done that, all the different partners associated, partner functions associated with that partner determination procedure will automatically be copied over to ZD. Now, if there are any errors like this, all you have to do is click this skip function as we have learned the other day. If there are any errors during copying, skip that particular part of the function. You don't need to worry about it. So a new partner determination procedure is created. And then go to partner functions to see what are all the different partner functions associated with that partner determination procedure. A new partner determination procedure is created. Now we are going to double click on the partner functions. And these are all the different partner functions that already got associated with CD. Now if any particular customer uses the partner determination procedure DD, it will get all these partner functions associated with it by default. Okay, so as simple as that. So it's got sold to, it's got a contact person, it's got EDI mail recipient, buyer, end user, so on and so forth. They're all automatically available because we copied from the standard sold to partner attribution procedure AG. Right? So what are the things that you need to understand here? Yes. 
So let's just expand these. And see what they are. Not modifiable and mandate. Not modifiable means after you have created the customer master, a partner function that you have added or automatically associated it with, once it's marked as not modifiable, then you cannot modify it at a later point. An example that I'm going to show you. It's going to be something like if you go to VD02, let's say, right, and then pick up 20, some customer that I have created, okay, then go to sales area data, partner functions. The one partner function that is not modifiable is sold to. And you can see that it's grayed out, right? This partner function sold to is grayed out, right? And that's the reason why this one is grayed out. That means if a partner function is marked as not modifiable, then that particular partner function cannot be changed after it's entered in the partner functions tab, the sales order or customer master or whatever we are configuring. Okay? Why do you do it? Generally, for partner functions that are automatically determined, there are some things that you don't want the user to change. If that is the requirement, then mark it as non-modifiable. Okay, now, let's say we try and delete this guy. What happens? It says I cannot delete it. Right? So what were they trying to do? I was trying to delete this guy. Right? So deletion is not allowed because T by is a mandatory partner function. And that is determined based on what? Based on the configuration over here that says Okay, that's based on the part, the configuration over here for mandatory. If you are marking a particular partner function as mandatory, then deletion of it is not allowed. That means deletion, not just deletion, if you do not enter it, then it's a mandatory partner function. Then it's, the system will not allow you to delete it or not enter it. It's mandatory and it has to be there. Okay, these are the properties that you can associate with a particular partner function. All right, that was step number two. Now we are moving on to step number three. What is step number three? Partner determination procedure assignment. Okay, you can see this the assignment. So what is it assigned to? The account assigning, the, the customer account group. So similar to 0001, you might have created another customer account. Anybody created a new customer account group? No, Shiva. I didn't know. So go to SPRO, ING, Sales and Distribution, uh, and then Logistics General. And then business partner, 
customer control customer account code. This is where you define a new customer account code. Okay. Go there. Oops. So go to new entries or rather select the 0001 uh, standard sold to copy it and create ZD01. Okay. So we have created a new customer account group. Now go to change. Oops. Go to change and go to partner determination procedure determination and now go to ZD01. ZD01 will be associated with AG. What do we need to change it to? ZD, ZD. ZD. That's our new partner determination procedure. Okay. So step number three. Associate new partner determination procedure. to customer account. Again, do not change it for standard partner functions or partner determination procedures or customer account group. Create your own, like the way I've done it. Create your own customer account group and create your own partner determination procedure. Don't meddle with the standard ones. Okay? It just causes more problems. Okay, that was step number three. Step number three is done. Very simple step. Step number four is the only step that people generally forget. And at this point, it's easy. Logical. You have defined a new partner function. You have associated your new partner function to the new partner determination procedure. You have associated your new partner determination procedure to the customer account group. Things doesn't get solved yet. So what needs to happen now? Last step is this guy. Account group function. So each customer account group need to be associated with a new partner, the new partner function that you have created. What's the one that you have created? ZD, right? Do you have it? No. So you have to associate that new partner function to the account group. So go to new entries and say ZD. And what's the customer account group? ZD01. Okay, you just going to list that step here. Step number four associate new partner function to the particular customer account group. It's more or less a very silly step, but you have to do it to make sure that it works for your customer account group. Okay? Now all your steps are done, you can just go test it. So how do we test it? So test. How do you test it? Go create a new new customer of type customer account group ZD01 and see whether it works. ZD01, create it of type ZD01, right? ZD01, the one that we have created just now. And give some name, some description. Where do you find partner functions? Here. Okay. So we do. Something is wrong. It's not working properly. 
Ideally, the soul to party should already be have come here as it were, but it didn't work. So, where are we going from? Let's go back to our drawing board, save this guy, and go back. Okay? So, let's go back to our partner termination procedure assignment. VD01 account group has been associated with partner procedure VD. Okay? That step is gone. I'm just revisiting all the steps. Okay, next is partner termination procedure VD that we have created. Does it have all the partner functions as they should have been? Okay, all the partner functions are there. Next, the account group partner functions association. If you look at that, we have created a new account group, right? VD01. But we did not associate the standard partner functions to it. For example, sold to should be associated with VD01 also. But did we do that? No. Anytime you create a new customer account group, it should be associated with all the partner functions that it should be that should should be associated with. And vice versa. Anytime a new partner function is created, it should be associated with all the new customer account groups that it should be associated with. This is more or less a secondary association other than the one that you have created in the partner termination procedure. So you don't need to worry about the logic in it, you just follow it blindly. Okay? So in this case, what we're going to do is soul proof should be there. Ship two should be there. Bill two should be there. Payer should be there. And ZD we have already associated. All right? Hit enter, and you'll get this. Choose the key from the allowed namespace error. Just hit ignore. Okay. While doing this step, test, we did not get the partner functions. Right? We did not get the partner functions. So something went wrong. So the fix for that is this. Associate all PFs partner functions to the newly created customer account group. If you are doing it for the standard customer account group or <coughs> uh, 0001 or any of the existing customer account groups, you might not have to do this because it's already done for you. But since we have created a new customer account group, we have to do this extra step. Okay? Now let's test this again. Go back again to VD01. Go to sales area data, go to partner functions, oops, save it, okay, something is wrong, <laughs> ZD01, okay. Partner functions, partner determination procedure for VD01, it's associated with ZD, all right, and ZD is associated with all these different partner functions. I see that everything is right, but it's not working. Why? I don't know. Thousand ten zero zero. Okay, ZD zero one is a sold to party. Okay, okay. 
there. We go to the CNC data. data. Okay, there we go. I think we didn't save it previously. So these are our new partner functions. Okay. Now do we have ZD? The entry ZD is missing. In partner, PPAER, the entry ZD is missing. Is the entry ZD missing? Partner functions, ZD, save it or what? ZD is there. So, tools are similar to some to our build to our pair. ZD does exist. So, why is it not coming up? Okay, just give me one second. I'm going to troubleshoot it. Ah, looks like we didn't associate that partner function ZD with ZD. If you do that, I don't see a ZD here. No, I, I see a soul to, I see ship to, I see build to, I see payer, but I don't see that we have associated the partner function ZD with the partner attribution procedure ZD. So you can just take the standard configuration and then copy, remove mandatory, and then put ZD here. <coughs> okay, you might have missed that. Well, let's try it. VD01. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go to same serial data, partner functions. So ZD. Okay. ZD. All the error messages different. It says, yeah, VD does exist, but data is incomplete. Now, <coughs> again, the error message is different. It says, customer 1000 is not defined for partner function B. The problem here is, okay, we have defined an end user or a value value distributor as CD, but what are all the different customers that can play the role of Z? Is it O2? Is it built to, or is it a regular customer, say 001 account group? What are all the different customers that can play the role of Z? We didn't mention that. Right? So this is another problem that you get. When you define it, you are going to get the next problem as, I have not defined the partner function ZD for any particular customer. <coughs> 
In this case, even if I am trying to enter thousand, the scan is sold to. It doesn't work because thousand is not associated with zero. So what do we do? So we associate. We have to first understand what are all the different customers or partners that can play the role of VD in a particular transaction. Okay. So I'll give you a very simple example. Create a new partner function. Create a new customer as usual with a regular VD. Okay. What's the partner number that's created? Twenty-seven. Okay, take that. Now create a new customer again of the same type. Go to partner functions. Now put in VD and then 27 because 27 is a customer that is already us that can already be associated with the VD. Now this is a little tricky. You, you know, initially you might not be able to understand this. It's a, it's a little convoluted because. Yeah, we have partner functions, we have partner return machine procedures, we have customer account group, and then even inside it, we are associating partner functions with uh, partner return machine procedure, we are associating partner, partner functions with customer account group, and there are so many things happening here, and they are all interconnected. So you can only understand this when you do an example. Okay, so try and do an example. Uh, when you get a chance, just follow all these steps as as they exist. And if you are stuck at some point, just watch this video because we have hit every roadblock that can happen, and we have solved each of these roadblocks. Okay, the first one was we did not associate the new partner function with the customer account group. Things did not work, so we went back. Associated the new partner function with the customer account group. Then we tried again. Things didn't work. We were not able to add a new partner function. Why? The new partner functions were not associated with the new partner termination procedure. We added it. Came back again. Everything worked except the new partner function we were not able to create. Then what was the problem? We did not assign, or rather, there is no customer that can take the role of a ZD in the customer master. So we created a regular customer that can play the role of a ZD for ZD01 account group 27. Put that aside and created a new customer, and this time. We have a customer that already exists that can play the role of a ZD, and now we have associated that with ZD. Okay? That's how we have successfully assigned a new partner function to a new customer. Okay? Let me stop here for a bit. How confused are you guys? I think I got it, uh, but just have to practice it. Yes. So don't worry if you don't understand the con the configuration. Nobody is going to ask you a very detailed question on what happens if you do not assign a new partner function to a customer account group. Nobody, nobody is going to ask you that. But understand why we are doing partner functions. 
That is more important. Why? Why we are doing party functions? What is the meaning of a party function? The partner determination procedure and the corresponding things that we have done today is just the configuration part of it. Nothing groundbreaking there, not very, very important. It's just a sequence of steps. Anybody who can follow it using help.sap.com can do it. No big deal. Okay, even if you do not want to practice it, that's fine. You won't lose it. Okay, this could be useful for troubleshooting, especially you know when you are working on an IDES system. Things go wrong all the time with party functions. So you know you might want to come here and make sure that you at least are able to troubleshoot simple things. But beyond that, if you don't understand the full working of a partner termination procedure and uh, you know all the other things that we have done today, that's just fine. No problem. You don't have to worry about it. Shiva, Same with text determination procedure. Yeah. Shiva, how often this partner determination uh, normally is uh, followed in the industry? I'm not able to hear you, Rajesh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, how often we, uh, I mean, this partner determination is followed in the industry, like, you know? Oh, every it, project has to do it. Yeah, like, for example, sold, sold to, ship to, payers, and bill to, I understand. For example, if I am doing, if I am uh, doing, uh, selling it, uh, and if I have to ship to an other person, instead of the person, yeah. instead of the vendor whom I am supposed to ship, I add that partner function, that I understand. But, uh, but if I have to uh, ship or, uh, send the bill to that person, he needs to be also there in my system? No, I don't understand the question. Can, can you repeat that? Like, for example, the same example what is there on the screen, that sold to, bill to, payer and ship to. For example, this is an internal customer, say it is Imran. I am supplying to Imran, okay? And suddenly, the ZD is, for example, you, Shiva is there. So, I have to, I am... Instead of supplying these products to Imran, now I am supplying this to Shiva, who in turn will be paid by me. For example, this ship to will go to Shiva. So, I need to configure Shiva in my system first, before, uh, when I have to add this uh, partner function to him, to Imran. You have to have Shiva already existing before you create Imran, something like that. Okay, so that's what I want to ask. I mean, it is not that, you know, you can just put any customer like that. We need to have those customers in our fold first. We need to have that customer in the system, number one, and that, that customer needs to be created in such a way that the corresponding customer account group can be associated with this partner function. See, now, if I put 1,000 here... Hmm. It will not take. It will not take, because 1,000, why it will not take? Because it is not associated. ZD is this, uh, this customer is not uh, associated with 1000, right? The customer account group against 1000 is 0001. Yeah. And 0001 customer account group is not associated with ZD. That's the reason why 1000 doesn't work there. Okay. Like one more question, Shiva. Like for example, if I if we create an account determination group like ZD01, okay, ZD01, and we are only following that account determination group to make all our customers, okay? Okay, so you created a new customer account group ZD01, and you are using it for all your customers, okay? All my customers. I am not. I am not using anything else. So. Uh, in that case, if I have to, uh, I need to have all, for example, if I make a customer in ZD01, which is Imran, okay, Imran says that, okay, I need to, you need to supply this product to Shiva. So, I need to add Shiva also into my system? Yes, yes. If that is the end user, yes, you need to add Shiva into the system. Yes, correct. Then, in, then, I mean, then I need to uh, add this value-added distributor as Shiva and then make him an internal number, which, has, which is the customer number which I got it. Correct. Okay. I'm just trying to think, Shiva, as a business, um, uh, uh, how exactly the business will look into this. What would be the reason they wanted to do it? HP hmm. 
self computers via ingram micro to some value added distributor right now your question is why does hp need to bother about that value added distributor right yes you tell me the answer why hp need to worry about that value added distributor or let's say end user why does hp need to bother about end user because it is selling to ingram micro and all it needs to worry about is ingram micro but but ingram micro is in terms selling to value added reseller or this and then that guy is in turn selling to end user so why do all these different partners or um, you know um, people or companies associated in the entire supply chain be captured by hp they, they will have a track where exactly this product are getting sold exactly there are many reasons why because for example if you take the standard sarbanes oxley compliance act Mm-hmm. HP cannot recognize its revenue until it understands that the goods have reached the end user. How will you know it? So in that case, you have one more question. If HP thinks that it needs to know who the end user, so Ingram Micro, as a value-added distributor, has to also give all the end users to whom he is supplying to supplying HP products. In the case of electronics and software, yes. If, for example, for a physical deliverable, then for like like for example, a big generator, a power generator, worth one million dollars, that has been sold, then surveillance actually compliance is not the problem. Then the problem as to why the end user needs to be captured is totally different. In that case, the company would need to know it because. the end user's location is where the goods are going to exist so if any service is required or details of the end user are required for some reason okay so they can only get it by this method so that means if hp has sold a million computers in the last 10 years so to all million customers so he must be hp must be having the database of all million customers though they have sold it by a value distributor like inga very much yes okay shiva okay it could be useful for warranty it could be useful for install base it could be useful for revenue recognition or think about this hp will have to understand who the customer is it, yeah ingram micro is placing the order fine but finally if it is hp doesn't understand the customer who is buying the product then how can hp design the product do you understand the deeper meaning behind it yeah right so they have to do some reporting oh is it a student who is buying a product is it a customer below 20 years is it a office going person so so that you know they they those kind of those set of data will help in hp will help hp in designing the products for their end users that's why they, they are captured generally and apart from that there are many other reasons like warranty install base revenue recognition these are some of the examples of um scenarios why you will use end users now end user is only one example now another question could be why is a value added reseller captured what what value is he adding that yeah, depends sir value added reseller because you know ingram is supplying to say xyz company and yes. xyz further is selling to an end user so you right. can still capture the end user through the uh, value added this uh, reseller yeah so what value is that adding to hp that is up to hp you know we don't need to do further research into it but they obviously they have some value to hp you know they want to understand the entire supply chain that's why they capture their entire part of functions in the supply chain okay okay sir does it make sense yeah okay so we have only done part of determination at the master data level now what about transaction level master part of functions are not just available at the customer master level they are also available at the transaction level right so partner functions 
at transaction level. What other areas are they available at? So sales, delivery, billing. Right? In sales, we have the header and item level. Same with delivery and billing. Why do you need to have partner functions at header level versus item level? Again, we have seen it in the sales order type. Right? Over here, when you try to configure a partner determination procedure at the transaction level, things are a little more complicated. Okay? So let's see why they are. So let's define our uh, new partner, new customer. Okay, 28 was created. Now again, let's go to VOPA and define partner termination at the sales document header level. Okay, click on that, go to change, and as usual, click on partner determination procedures. The one what we that we do is Z uh, Raj. Let's say that's your document type. It's associated with the standard part of determination procedure TA. We don't want that. We want our own custom part of determination procedure. So select TA, copy, call it ZD or whatever. ZD, ZD01, whatever we did. ZD already exists. ZD01. Copy all. Okay. Anything that you want to skip, just use this to skip. New partner determination procedure created. Go inside and see all the different partner functions. So we have sold to, build to, should be paid. So let's add a new entry for ZD. Right? For ZD01, do we have the ZD partner function? No, we don't. So add a new partner function, ZD. Okay? Then we have some parameters here. Not modifiable. Mandatory, just like the way we had it in partner functions at the master data level. Then we have some magic happening here. We have some source, we have some origin, and we have some sequence. Okay, this is where things get different between the partner determination procedure at the master data level versus partner determination procedure on the transaction level. Okay? Now, if you take a ZD01 for a sold to or a ship to, okay, not much different. You just have this not mandatory, not modifiable or mandatory enabled, nothing more than that. If you do not specify a source, okay, or you do not specify an origin. Then, when you're creating a, a new transaction, right? We're doing it at a transaction level. When you're creating it at a new transaction level, where does that parking function come from? What is the source for this ZD? For example, if you let's take a ship to or a bear, simple ship to, right? And let's draw a picture. So we have a customer here. Okay. It has a sold to, ship to, build to, there. Standard partner functions. When you create an order or a quotation, let's say, a quotation will also have 
a partner determination procedure associated with it, say VD01. That will have SOL2, SHIP2, BIL2, BL. What is the source of this? Where does it come from? Customer master is always the source. Let's understand them. So, for a transaction, by default, the source is the master data. Okay? The source is generally the master data. Now, look at this. Second example. From a quotation, we are creating an order. This could have another part of intervention procedure, ZE01, which also has a sold to, ship to, build to, player. Now, what will be the source for this? This or this? Logically, the source for this should be the previous transaction. Now, do you understand why? Why it should be, this, why is the source for this partner determination should be previous transaction and not the customer master? If you understand that answer to that question, you understand this. Otherwise, you don't. Let me give you an example. <coughs> same, let's take the same example, okay? I'm just going to blow this off and then start all over again, okay? So, in from HP's perspective, they have created a customer masters like this. So, sold to Ingram, okay? Ship to Ingram, because Ingram, we don't know what it will ship to. So, player is Ingram, and bill to is also Ingram. That's how HP has defined it. At the customer master level, now, Ingram is asking for a quotation. In this quotation, Ingram says, yeah, I need a quotation for ABC computers. They, they will be the ship too. And I will be paying it. And the bill too will be XYZ Corporation. Okay. Now, when you create an order, when you create an order, the soul to should be what? Soul to is clear Ingram. What should be the ship to? Is it Ingram or ABC computers? ABC. ABC. Why? Because the we are giving it to ABC computers, right? Huh. Ingram wants so, to prepare a quotation to ABC computers. Right. So, at a transaction level, partner function should come from the previous transaction or from the master data? Previous transaction. Okay? That's yeah. what the origin becomes. Okay? So, by default, the one that we have discussed in that scenario, it comes from the previous transaction. That's how SAP works. Okay? If there is no previous transaction, it always picks up from the customer master. Just remember this particular concept. You don't need to worry too much about it. At a transaction level, this is the only complication. But other than that, everything else is similar. Everything else, like partner termination, new partner function, association, all that is the same. The only one extra thing that you need to remember is this particular example. If you remember this example as it is, that's good enough. We have understood partner determination at the transaction level. Don't worry about how it is configured, what is the source, there are user exits that you can use to determine the source, many things that you can do there. But not your worry at this point. You can do this on your job. At this point, just understand this one. Shiva, instead of instead of this quotation, for example, uh, the uh, uh, the flow is through quotation to the order from here. Instead mm -hmm. of this quotation is not there, and if Ingram says that you 
make an order the ship to is abc then the source would be c no shiva it comes from the mass data mm so sorry sorry instead of the order it is if 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 what if 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 uh, hp is not giving any quotation to ingram and ingram says okay you make an order yeah directly the ship to will be ship to uh, the second question is can there be can it be changed to the transaction level Okay. By default, we will send that to a question. So HP is master data. Directly, we are creating an order. Hmm. So sold to will be Ingram, shipped to will be Ingram, paid will be Ingram, BP will be Ingram. Can we change the shipped to now to X Y Z manually? We can, Shiva. We can. So if you want to stop that from happening, uh, then we should uh, uh, we should click the uh, mandatory non-modified, non-modified. Yes, perfect. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay, good. So we'll stop here then. Um, so today's part of determination. Tomorrow is the last class. We'll not discuss any other topics. Tomorrow is more or less like a blanket class. You can bring your questions. You can bring anything you want. Anything. Okay, Shiva. Or you want to do it next Saturday, Shiva?